Hello everyone. Uh, I am Deya Prakash and it's my pleasure to welcome you all to the Security Roundtable presented by IBM Security and SME Venture as part of Cyber Security Summit. Uh, this is essentially this is essentially chapter 3 of the Cyber Security Summit that IBM Security uh, hosted on August 18th that many of you might have attended. Uh, in that session we had invited Mr. Bob Kalka who is the global vice president technical sales ibm security in this session he had shared his learning on how organizations globally are going fearless with zero trust and why indian organization need to adapt a zero trust approach to cyber security uh, mr kalka had also highlighted four key use cases that he has seen globally uh, being most focused on from a security point of view uh, the first one was protect remote workforce. Second one was reimagine hybrid cloud security. Third was address rising insider threats. And fourth, preserve customer privacy. Uh, since then, we have done deep dive sessions to focus on each of these uh, you know, four use cases that I spoke about. Today's session, uh, we will deep dive on the third pillar, which is uh, addressing the rising insider threats. Uh, and you will all know that uh, you know insider threat account for almost 60 percent of cyber attacks on enterprises and during the pandemic when almost overnight enterprises were forced to implement solution that could allow employees to shift to work remotely it created extensive opportunities for insider threat to flourish uh, you know what fueled the fire was the fact that more and more enterprises today are reliant on cloud and as a result, uh, the number of insider threat has increased to hoping 47% between uh, 2018 to 2020. Why are the insider threats dangerous? Uh, you know, that is something that we want to discuss today. And along with this, the other aspects such as how can we address internal threats, especially with employees working remotely? Can zero trust framework really help? Uh, you know, that's going to be our agenda for the day of the discussion for the next 40 50 minutes that we are together and uh, you know i couldn't have asked for better gathering of you know the speakers uh, the group today as it and cyber security leaders from a diverse range of industries banking pharma manufacturing and we also have a subject matter expert so without taking much time, let me introduce quickly our speakers, esteemed speaker for the session today. Um, Dr. Satish Pawar, Head IT Sun Pharmaceutical Limited. Welcome to the session, Dr. Satish. Mr. Prashant, Head IT Being Human Clothing. Welcome to the session, Mr. Prashant. Mr. Somil Purani, DVP Access Bank Limited. Welcome to the session today. Mr. Pradeepta Patro, IT leader, Cyber Security Adani Group. Srivats, Mr. Srivats Swardarajan, CEO, Spice Money. Mr. Abhijit Chatterjee, Director IT, TCG Life Sciences. Welcome to the session. Mr. Manish Chandigaran, Head IT, Aditya Virla Group. Dr. Mukesh Mehta, CTO, BNK Securities. And Mr. Yashoraj Tyagi, CTO, Cashe. I also have with me the subject matter expert, Mr. Pradeep from IBM. Uh, just a quick introduction of Mr. Pradeep. Uh, Pradeep leads the threat management business for IBM security for India and South Asia region. South Asia region. Mr. Pradeep comes with 20 years of experience, most of them in the information technology and many of them, or majority of them in cyber security domain. He is passionate about maintaining healthy customer relationship and I would like to now invite Mr. Pradeep uh, to share his perspective around uh, today's topic. Uh, so over to you, Mr. Pradeep. Good afternoon. Thanks, Daya. Thanks for the introduction. Um, it's my pleasure to be in front of such a distinguished panel of eminent leaders. And I'm really looking forward to this discussion as the topic is very relevant in today's scenario and something that I've been passionately following. 
So before I start, I hope everyone is safe and healthy. So I would like to share some of our experiences um, from what we, the way we interact with and work with a lot of our customers. In my interaction with some of the largest of the financial services customers and with our own stock team at IBM, I often hear that insiders, be it um, employees, partners, or contractors, right? You know, we no longer consider contractor as an outsider entity. Contractors are, are treated as an insider entity because they have the kind of access that even employees get are routinely at the center of costly data breaches. There are so many scenarios like that. Now, insider threats are believed to be, and um, yeah, rightly so, more dangerous than external threats. Why? Because insiders have access to the sensitive information on a regular basis, on rather on a continuous basis, and may even know how that sensitive information is guarded by the IT or security teams. So that makes it even more dangerous. Now, moreover, they can do so without any significant um, evidence of intrusion. So in fact, employees may even intend to compromise security. Uh, I mean, may not even intend to compromise security, but a simple insertion of a USB drive can introduce a threat. So there are a lot of statistics which say that the insider threats are um, predominantly coming from genuine users who are unaware of what they are doing. Right? No, need not be a bad employee. Right? So insider threats are never from bad employees. It's all good users who have been misused into or, or accidentally you know, revealing information. That's the kind of scenario that we come across. So here we have representatives from industrial companies, banks, pharma companies, e-commerce, fintech to share their experience and views. You probably would have started to know that banks, the number of incidents emanating from insiders, especially around uh, theft credentials have tripled since 2016. So if I recollect correctly, uh, from an average of 1 to 3.2 or 3.5 percent per enterprise. So that's more than three times. And I just wanted to highlight two cases that happened in 2020. I cannot take the names. Uh, right while well, it's it's all there in the news, but we do not want to take any enterprise names here in the discussion. In the first scenario, two employees from a large industrial conglomerate first downloaded thousands of files of trade secrets and then sent it to private email addresses. Genuine malicious inserters then traded this information for business advantage. Second, towards the end of uh, 2020, I recollect um, in October 2020, several of a customer of a global retailer and e-commerce giant received an email stating that their email addresses have been disclosed by an employee to a third party. So you would have seen interesting trend in this, you know, this kind of examples of most of them are from the COVID times or you know, the, the era of remote working. So as uh, Daya pointed out, organizations are literally forced to enable employees to work remotely during the COVID pandemic time and do so rather quickly. You know, most, of, most of the customers, I know, especially the banking customers who had to move their end their workforce to a remote, you know, uh, remote working mode, they're quite unprepared. So suddenly the number of endpoints IT teams uh, supporting have expanded exponentially. This further resulted in reduced visibility of IT and the security teams, of course. Right? And to make matters even worse, 
or more difficult and more and more organizations today are relying big time on the cloud and this has again further resulted in shifting the network boundaries about where the lines of responsibility start and finish so a lot of questions a lot of challenges i'm looking forward to hear from all of you and now we will all learn together and uh, we are all all ears to listen from our esteemed panelists and their views experience on these subjects with that thank you once again for taking time uh, for joining the panel discussion and i would like to hand it back to deya thank you so much sir. thank you so much thank you so much mr pradeep i think you spoke about pandemic you spoke about how organizations across industry vertical overnight had to deal with this situation and then enable remote working and so many other things technological adoptions etc uh, you know uh, while the whole picture looks scary in terms of what it has resulted into from from a, a you know threat and security point of view but at the same time if all these things wouldn't have happened i really wonder if as a business we would have existed in today's world right i mean there was no way that we could have existed we could have we, we would have pretty much gone uh, right so something that we had to deal with we had to stand up for and then enable it and then perhaps uh, you know work on measures how to secure that right so uh, so the the first thing is that um, you all of you as leaders you enabled your organizations to deal with such uh, unprecedented times uh, you know calls for a big um, round of applause uh, and and then it is time now having dealt with that that we should think about all the aspects uh, of security data breaches etc that uh, we need to be cautious of uh, in terms of making sure that we as a brand do not suffer uh, so i would like to start the uh, you know discussion of today uh, and before i start the discussion all the views that you are going to express in this conversation today we understand completely they are your personal views they don't represent the organization and that is what we are looking forward to right and we are not looking for any confidential data or any information with regards to your enterprise but it is about your experience as leaders how effectively you have dealt with the whole thing that's the experience that we want to hear and we want to learn from that so that's it, it's a forum for collective learning thank you so much for your time today let me start with my first question i had few questions in my mind that i thought i will speak uh, i I'll, i'll ask each one of you but let me start with my first question and my first question uh, maybe uh, you know it it's you you, you can start uh, mr abhijit you can start with this and uh, uh, you know dr satish maybe i'll come to you for the same question after uh, taking input from mr abhijit but my first question is that uh, you know as i mentioned um, uh, earlier also statistics from across the world indicates that more cyber most cyber attacks in fact 60% of them uh, are contributed from insider threats uh, you know what are your thoughts on the same and what sort of challenges does insider threats poses today as more employees work from home than ever before um, so mr abhijit seems you are on mute uh, mr abhijit seems you are on mute uh, yeah so am i audible sorry i think i had yes. gone to mute yep. you had yep. asked us to so uh, my apologies uh, so i just said loud uh, and clear good, loud and clear good afternoon everyone uh, uh, it's a pleasure being here um, with uh, all of you um okay so uh, again this is uh, what i'm uh, expressing is completely my uh, personal take on the matter uh i basically see uh, two very secular trends um arising out of uh, you know what we have just been discussing um a couple of minutes ago what pradeep was talking about um two being one is basically the remote uh, plus the hybrid work option and i'm seeing that if you go to this uh, um various job sites uh, remote is basically sort of the new joining bonus these days and another thing which you which we saw happen is basically the solar winds the nobelium uh, threats 
and erstwhile our father's hackers so so to say the hackers of the modern day are quite different so i think the remote hybrid option uh, you know round about the pandemic has become the new norms and people are working outside uh, from outside to inside and the traditional corporate network i don't i don't think the traditional ways uh, i feel uh, are you know, making ex organizations exposed and more vulnerable to the data loss and threats, basically. Um, but it is not just the technical part, there is also a cultural uh, cultural aspect. Uh, a lot of employees are really struggling and, you know, to provide, uh, a lot of employers are rather, you know, struggling to provide that level of security, uh, level of awareness. Uh, there are a lot of companies who are carrying legacy security solutions, uh, whether it's in the data center or on-prem. Uh, which is leaving our, whether it's VPN or internal access uh, um, or your, basically your system set up, uh, you know, open to threats and uh, uh, data exfiltration, uh, exfiltration, uh, so to say. Uh, you know, some of the, you just uh, talked about the stats. So, so I, I let me just share a couple of stats also. In 2020, um, uh, roughly the, in, in, the insider threat, and that's one of the things which we are discussing, they rose by about 30%. Um, and uh, uh, the incidents sort of uh, that is that are happening spiked by about 47, 47 to 50 percent. A um, couple of things which I see uh, which are happening as part of the insider threats are privilege abuse, uh, which is happening. Uh, one of the same survey uh, says that about 60 percent of the cases are privilege abuse. Uh, data, data mishandling because of awareness issues, not necessarily malicious. Um, that is happening. Um, unapproved uh, hardware people had to very quickly uh, go on to the uh, you know lockdown mode so there's a lot of unapproved hardware which went out um, privileged possession was another issue uh, so the european union of uh, cybersecurity administration did some research uh, last year and part of this year where they found that uh, it's primarily about 27 percent of the data bre breaches uh, happened because of the human factors or literally negligence you know, phishing um, is about 67% of the stack. Uh, again, unintentional insider threats, uh, remote exploits. Uh, you know, uh, what we saw during the coronavirus days, uh, we just spiked for about 600% uh, in around March to May of 2020 was the COVID virus uh, email threats that was coming. Uh, password policy, reusability of the password, that was uh, uh, very predominant. Um, unsecured Wi-Fi was very predominant. And we also saw along with it, the challenges in detecting the in, in, insider threats. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, the profiles were compromised, uh, uh, some were malicious, obviously, uh, but the detection was also very difficult because these had legitimate access, uh, very difficult to identify good versus the bad. Um, the lack of context was not really um, uh, available. So, you know, the, the factors, the, the policies, the anticipations, uh, they were not really known. I mean, obviously we were learning for a long time. It's not something which was probably not known, but it, we were challenged with a lot of new things. Uh, and obviously we saw part of it, obviously though were sort of non-malicious there, but there are malicious one. There are industrial espionages which are happening. Uh, there are state-sponsored attacks which are happening. So one is compromised users. Other than the careless insiders, they are malicious insiders and the compromised uh, insiders. So just to shape it up and to summarize, I think uh, uh, we saw an increase in the security products in the last couple of years, um, and the data they, they they are collecting and and sort of analyzing is really uh, creating an alert fat fatigue uh, to my to to my view rather. I think there's a whole host of data which we are coming. Uh, and it's very difficult for analysts, I think, uh, and I, I hope that some of our uh, panelists will also share the same view, uh, that it's very difficult to possibly prioritize the volume of attacks uh, uh, and sort of to address the biggest threat out of them. Um, the intelligence that we collect are not always actionable. So, and I think there is a call now for the right tool uh, to respond proactively um, and when the bridge is sort of well, as the breach is happening, or to sort of block the persistent threats, rather. Um, and uh, we also, just to summarize, we also have to remember, as a CISO or in the in in an IT aspect, that we have to protect the critical data loss. Negative impact of the organization is very very critical. Damage of reputation is very critical. So I think overall, I think uh, it's a journey. 
we all have to undertake together. And uh, I think it's a learning experience for all of us as we move move ahead with it. Sure. So thank you so much for that elaborative, uh, you know, uh, explanation of the 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 context that we're talking about enabling remote workforce. So, Dr. Satish. Um, uh, uh, yeah. You know, what has what what's your take, what has been your take on the subject enabling remote workforce and the increasing insider threat uh, perspective? Yes, sure. Uh, first of all, before I start, good afternoon to all and uh, thanks uh, SMB and IBM allowing me, you know, the part of panel. And uh, and there is one correction, you know, I am a Spark head because within Sun Pharma there is a Spark R and D. From there, I'm heading that IT coach. Okay, nice. and uh, let us come to the subject. More or less, you know, Abhiji started very well, and I totally agree. And uh, addition to that, you know, I have done few notes with respect to today's uh, uh, discussion. So, uh, insider thread, as per my understanding, or uh, as per the thing, you know, when industry start, the insider thread is right from the day one it is not like you know we are talking inside a trade because of you know digitization we are talking you know volumes and everything data we have recorded so it was easy to you know to done with that data so what is the inside of the trade that is we need to understand and everybody i think understand well because we are all inside the trade to be very frank and employees who are former the people who are working because they have access to all sensitive system ad, uh, system databases and what what not and system administrator you can say you know he's having everything then oh, how and how we can different types of uh, insider threat we can first we need to segregate what are those insider threats and based on that we can act which are tools and that steps we can follow and definitely this insider trade is very difficult to control but at the same time it is not impossible also because certain behavior uh, pattern you know you can catch there are certain mm -hmm. nine uh, monitor behaviors have uh, noted down see if you see the if you monitor these nine indicators this is from my side and taken mm -hmm. from some differences also Sure. Poor performance review. If any employee goes with that poor performance review, then he lost interest. It does mm -hmm. not mean that he will start, you know, uh, using data and all. No, but this is one of the criteria we can mention. Then policy disagreement. Certain policies mm -hmm. the employer don't like, but they never express. But it may mm -hmm. uh, go into that direction. Then displease the employees. Certain supervisor, your subordinate don't like. Then financial distress, that is one of the factors also you can monitor. Sure. The suspicious financial gain, odd working hours. Some odd working hours people started using systems and were going into the network. Then sure. unusual international travels. Then hmm. leaving the company and overly enthusiastic employee. These are the nine sure. indicators, as per my understanding, you know, where we can uh, monitor and go ahead. And sure. There are steps, there are steps you can, you know, uh, control this. There are the critical so we, assets. We'll, 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 yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll come to that, Dr. Satish. Right now, what yeah. we're trying to establish is that, you know, the yeah. um, you know, whole remote Con work enablement, all right, yeah. how it has resulted yeah. into kind of, uh, you know, increasing the landscape for insider threat right so that's that's the context that we want to understand but we would definitely want to come to behavioral aspect employee yeah. um, uh, satisfaction and stuff like that so uh, you know in the discussion but at this point of time it is about remote working and how it has increased like what has been your experience in in your uh, you know organization or industry that you are uh, operating in um, how it has got impacted uh, because of this whole enablement uh, the number of inside threats uh, has increased right so that's study which is telling us but your experience yeah. on that is something that we want to capture here right yes absolutely and definitely because of remote uh, access to systems and uh, all databases definitely right. it got increased and it is somehow uh, difficult to monitor that is what i can say yeah sure sure thank you so much for that thank you so much uh, uh,
Dr. Bukesh, um, you know, you you also enabled uh, the remote workforce, right? And I am sure that you would have also encountered the cases where uh, the inside threat has uh, the landscape has gone increased, right? Uh, so, what has been your observation? What has been your uh, uh, you know experience around this? I think uh, the the first part is that the threats are the part of your life. You need to mitigate them. You need to have, you need to plan and you need to mitigate them. What you need to do is that you need to have a proper tools, proper uh, work culture, or proper uh, uh, this thing, tools to mitigate those things. So what uh, uh, Pradeep also mentioned and Abhijit also said, yes, there are problems and the people were caught unaware overnight. People were have to move out from a work culture, or work from office to work from home. The VPNs were only for IT people. All of a sudden, the VPN were exposed to everybody. So those are the problems which were planned. So what we need to have it, uh, these are now part of life and then we need to live and survive with that. And I think the next one year we need to continue with that. You never know where is the, the third wave or the fourth wave. And you never know 21 or 22. So let's plan it. How do you do it? What are the challenges? And how do you work and survive with that? That's a, that's a now it, this is a taken in. That's an integral part of your workspace. So you need to have proper tools. You need to have proper activities there. That is where you sure. plan it. You have a DLPs. You have the VPN access. What a, right now he was saying that unorganized the behavior pattern. You need to you need to follow those things. The routine sure. work people will do, and people are not doing it actually. Now we are uh, sure. 18 months. Everything is planned. So what you need to do is that put your put your tools, put your arms and ambitions over the people. So that they are aware right. of what they are doing and how they are doing it. We'll take that sure. case to case and they're doing the, these case, but let's live it, survive, let's live with it. We, this is going to continue for at least next six to 12 months. You never know third wave is there or not. Sure, sure, great. I mean, uh, great perspective, uh, got it actually. Uh, uh, at this point of time, uh, uh, Shrivats, we were, we are, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, whole pandemic impacting the workforce and the workforce has to suddenly shift to remote working and all that and you know that led to increase in the number of inside threat because you know suddenly the perimeter uh, of the organization that you know the boundaries of the organization got uh, blurred and uh, you know all these scenario happened so what has been your experience uh, uh, dealing with remote enabling remote workforce and uh, increase of the insider threat uh, sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Just to uh, quickly introduce, I represent Spice Money. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Spice Money, and I have the entire uh, InfoSec tech digital platforms and uh, other functions reporting to me, including design thinking. Uh, quickly right. to summarize, uh, the threat was always there. Uh, Insider threat was always there, but it was in the control environment. Uh, mm -hmm. Even in the control environment, there were loose ends because the threat detection has to get divided into people, process, and technology. And when mm -hmm. your people identification and the process, when I say people criticality, uh, uh, the functionality and the intensity of handling they do in terms of system data and other access points they have got, and the process well defined finally gets stitched into technology. The right. the problem statement right now, if you if you see information technology is a subject which cuts across not only uh, within the CISO limits in the organization but also gets reported to the board uh, to the extent that even RBI comes with a lot of uh, directives on how it has to be. Uh, because it has become more vulnerable the more you become digital what yeah. has got changed in the pandemic is the intensity uh, which was more in control became an uncontrolled environment right and also you have got people using laptops who have gone out of your own control network who have gone to a private network where they have to access the problem actually started when the processes were defined in such a way that people access to the technology and storing data and accessing data within systems were missing like for example if you have bi tools in the organization People are traditionally mm -hmm. and even today used to download them into Excel format and use it in a different cuts storing in their D drive. And now what has access what has happened in a control environment? This entire Excel sheets was controlled from going outside. Now we are suddenly switched over from a control environment to an uncontrolled environment. You are into a network which is not controlled with by firewall, which means you mm -hmm. have a possibility of opening a browser, putting it in your Gmail and sending the data outside. That's why the internal right. threat first has started from the data perspective. Now from the system access perspective, uh, your entire systems were uh, built in such a way that it is controlled within your firewalls. Now those, those those cannot be opened overnight. 
and then your VPN, SVPN, and all those access, you cannot give it to 1000, 1500, 2000 people, right? So then you need to architect the system in such a way that it is cloud enabled uh, in a controlled data center, which is from India region, and also has got this infosec capabilities well built in within the access metrics. Now, when I come to the access metrics, you, you might put forgot password, uh, you might make uh, their life miserable by saying every one month you change it and everything. But how do you blend it with the technology where you get it with an identification access of the person? Like, for example, mm -hmm. uh, we give facial recognition and biometrics to the external customer, but internally we don't do that. Internally, we'll mm -hmm. ask him to put password policy and change it after every one month. So there are a lot of change management that was required when this environment changed from a control to an uncontrolled environment. And this is how the life is going to be because uh, today the business models have very clearly understood that we don't want to invest in infrastructure. We would rather have the workforce, be it customer care or be it information technology or any business people, let them work from anywhere and any place, which means your systems beyond systems, the more mm -hmm. focus should be on the people and the process element. Technology mm -hmm. will always evolve and technology will always support people and processes. So our focus was more on people and process, which means implementations of DLP meticulously through your mail systems. Come out of your traditional outlook systems which is hardwired uh, and which is very difficult to implement those systems even when you select your softwares and systems to be implemented look at those uh, one which are uh, not only cost effective but also you know cuts across multiple layer uh, if you see there is a separate stack if you actually go at an architecture diagram you will have a separate stack of uh, uh, information technology systems cutting across these layers and you can build an mm -hmm. architecture diagram on its own you know, for every new thing for MDM, they will have a separate uh, tool. Uh, for DLP, you have a separate tool. So how do you consolidate all of this? So even from the OEM perspective, OEMs have started thinking that how they can bring a consolidated tools, right? Which will mm -hmm. cut across infrastructure layer, people layer, process layer, and also the other application layer. The biggest mm -hmm. uh, uh, problem that the industry is facing is all the infosec tools has thought through either in the infrastructure layer isolated way and the application isolated way. There is no one tool mm -hmm. available which cuts across both this layer and the, the mm -hmm. OEM which actually gets that uh, thing in his architecture diagram or his solution design is the one who will actually lead the market going forward. Great insight, great insight. I think, uh, you know, this island approach that you spoke about and, uh, you know, I think, uh, and, and and I related back to uh, when, you know, Mr. Pradeep was talking about initially uh, the, the context of the topic. Uh, I related to uh, the fact that he mentioned that it's very difficult to track, track and trace the inside threat, uh, you know, uh, situations, right? So uh, while we all know that uh, insider threat is increasing, the the uh, the whole thing is uh, gone up because of the remote working and many of the aspects that you mentioned about, uh, actually, what Abhijit spoke about, Dr. Satish and Mr. Mukesh, Dr. Mukesh also spoke about, uh, but. Uh, yeah, I, I think the challenge is that, uh, you know, so it's a well-established thing that insider threat, uh, the numbers are increasing uh, many fold. Uh, and, and, and Pradeep, you mentioned about, uh, you know, catching those incidences, right? And difficulty in catching those incidences. So Mr. Pradeep, uh, Pradeepta, if I may uh, ask you, uh, you know, your take on, you know, the number of threats are increasing, but you know how it is becoming difficult and difficult uh, to kind of trace them, track them. Uh, you know, in 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 your uh, this thing experience, what are the difficulties? Yeah, first of all, yeah, good afternoon to all, and definitely yes, it is a pleasure to be here in the panelist. And the point what you highlighted here is uh, very important. Uh, the challenges in the issue will be always there, not only for this pandemic time, and before that also there is insider and outsider threats is equally important for the businesses. It is the enterprise where risks always be there, like you know, uh, wherever, whatever business you do, and anywhere the blue globe. The point is important is how the challenges or the risks or the issues which is coming across. The, by the way, uh, digitization or the pandemic, this is the certain like you know. Uh, 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 event which is happening, how we are going to safeguard our uh, businesses or the uh, businesses or the data or the communication the way we do. It has been there, like you know, as rightly uh, uh, Sivata has said, like you know, rightly, and uh, Dr. Satis and Mukesh has also highlighted those. Is uh, see, if all the incidents, all the events will be happening or it used to happen also in the past. Today, the changes is happened due to this event is the pandemic. Today, you say tomorrow. The, the, the incidents are become like you know larger and larger, and the surf the attack surfaces are 
going larger and larger the way we are adopting the digitizations the way we are adopting like you know uh, to uh, the, the market come to the market in the I, I, uh, I, iot or ot or you can talk about internet of things smart uh, cities a lot of lot of mega infrastructures are coming up you are expecting like you know everything you pass on to the user side of it the mobile mobile uh, mobile things are coming up very fast a lot of things are happening in the mobile mobility perspective mm -hmm. see the point is here today is like you know we should have the right mechanism or tool um, it should not be the manual perspective it should be automated we can think mm -hmm. about the as a technology we can think about the framework we can think about the sase is the framework we can think about to monitor uh, identify the asset first what is the risks risks what is the priority on those risks category you have to categorize those then we have to find out what are the things i can protect i cannot protect everything what are the 80 20 rules works here honestly we have to mm -hmm. focus on that mm -hmm. rule where like you know we see that that is the major threat for us and we have to protect that uh, while mm -hmm. protecting those so what are the things we are going to do it it is the main is rightly uh, sivastav is highlighted it's a process people and technology absolutely but culture right. is also part, party to it uh, there's a major right. party to it in this case today if i'm talking right. about yes of course i'm monitoring those part today my 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 employees are working from home are they knowing about the fishing uh, what, what is the fishing what is the bc bc things is happening no certain things are yes it is given for the industry like you know financial industry or the people are tech savvy but manufacturing per se if you see people are working on the plants and all those very they may not be interested they may not be knowing about uh, like you know uh, uh, the fishing kind of attacks today that inside uh, inside threat what we are talking about is a large the, the scale is gone high so we should have the right tool it is not the dlp not that mdr or not the edr can help us or save us honestly i'm telling you i have just evaluated certain tools where i have seen um, uh, that, you know, and two uh, tools which is we not able to detect not able to find out those uh, malware or ransomware it is already sitting in that network so how how we can find out those how we can monitor those on the live scenario not like you know things which is happen it is always reactive we have to like you know always uh, um, um, it is a, like you know rest behind uh, between like you know two part and party uh, but thing sure. is how the enterprise should monitor it and live scenario how my incident response plan is in place and how sure. what are that like in risks what are the classification of my asset important assets or which is like you know more vulnerable those things we have to monitor regularly and we have to put the places like in all automation tool i'm to be very honest the silos the time has gone now that should be all automated single plane visibility part from the end to end starting from our end user sure. You have connected to your other side of and, end and, users. And, and, yeah, we will come to that part. We will come to that part. We will talk about zero trust security framework in in a while. But I mean, uh, if I may come to you, uh, Mr. Somil, um, you know, uh, what what's your take on you know, it's being difficult to kind of identify the insider threats. So, you know, uh, what my views? <laughs> so first of all, good afternoon, everyone. My thoughts uh, on increased insider threats is, is you know, as uh, Abhijit and Dr. Satish were saying, okay, majorly we have seen it as privilege escalations and curiosity. It is not that they were not there, they were there from the beginning. Um, even what, uh, you know, Sivats was saying that uh, initially we were operating in a controlled environment. This environment where we know that you know there are colleagues around, there is uh, cameras, there are monitoring, there is at least somebody who is there. Your peers are there. Once when you are at home, people just think that nobody is watching. So what do you do? Okay, so at times empty mind becomes devil's workshop. Curiosity asks them to do privilege escalation and see what is happening. Hmm. Major challenge what we see is the amount of incidents and events what we get in the system and how to identify the false positives okay because mm -hmm. every single threat has to be considered as a serious threat and then mm -hmm. you have to do a negative validation that is the biggest challenge what we have because imagine that your workforce has doubled tripled your geographical boundaries have been broken if you are operating only from a region now you are operating for abcd region okay and then mm -hmm. Uh, while this pandemic happened, initially 
the objective was to enable workforce to start working security mm -hmm. always you know was in back of mind that yeah we are going to do something about it someday right so that was not the focus initially but now more and more focus has been given uh, if we see devsec office something which has been practiced almost across all the organizations to try and see how it can be controlled but again whatever mechanism we do whatever automation we do understanding what is a real threat and what is a false threat is always going to be challenged no matter how smart tools we bring in right right That's thank you so much yeah thank you so much uh, so uh, you know uh, dr satish spoke about uh, you know behavioral aspect and you know uh, and and you know one of this element is basically the insider threat it's very difficult to catch them because uh, you know there are various behavioral aspect on that and you know research and the studies have uh, also shown the fact that the the number of threats that are coming from insider um, uh, you know the cases of insider threat uh, it's the naive users right and uh, you know many of you you have mentioned very clearly saying that we don't know people behavior and that leads to a greater risk to the organization uh, you know uh, which leads to the insider threats um, because they were not aware of it uh, i think in in this discussion we don't have on video but we have mr yashuraj also uh, or as part of the discussion so mr yashuraj are you able to hear us yes uh, uh, yes uh, definitely i'm able to hear great. you apologies been great. having some video no. but right but great to have you great to have you so mr yashuraj if you can share your views on behavioral aspect and how and you know uh, uh, what's your take what's your experience on that sure 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 uh, uh, you know so thanks thanks for that question and uh, good afternoon everybody uh, glad to be here thanks for sme and uh, ibm for uh, organizing a uh, really good set of people to uh, discuss this with and uh, that's a very good question that you bring up uh, right now around behavioral aspects because just doubling down on whatever we just discussed uh, in the last uh, you know uh, last last uh, half an hour that uh, you know one of one of the things that really happened was obviously the fact that the focus as it was just mentioned was was on getting things working again right because there was a sudden transition from a uh, controlled content environment to uh, something that is like spread across all or across all places and hence uh, you know you see this uh, you know increasing discussions and discourse around uh, behavioral analytics to actually tap into prospective insider threats and that has happened because you see the rising number of threats and one of the things is that it takes a lot of time to control them because all the response to these kind of insider threats has always been reactive in nature rather than being proactive in nature because it's always been okay you know like this happened so what should we do now we should probably increase a uh, level of security okay this happened so we should probably form a policy around this now like this is the sort of access controls we'll have now going forward because xyz things happened it's it's there has not been a cohesive set of policies generally that organizations have followed for these kind of things in practice now when it comes to the proactive side of things that's where uh, behavioral analytics has now really taken up uh, the center stage because you know uh, obviously while insider threats and you know uh, insider uh, incidents because of insider insider threats are, are generally a, you know a, a people organization or an it governance problem uh, but people make you know, people take advantage of that because they are aware that these these policies are lax and that behavioral analytics plays a good role over there because you know obviously Uh, the idea is to be able to automatically detect unusual uh, behaviors online that people would not be very comfortable doing in the content environment which you think like say a credential abuse or uh, uh, you know uh, large data uploads uh, unusual access patterns uh, you know in terms of both time as well as activity they are very telltale signs of insider threat so the idea is that how can you detect behavior that is anomalous in nature that is different in nature the idea is that this might not really be a uh, indicator of a threat but at least if you know this behavior is not normal you can then address that and figure out that okay is there is this is a problem right uh, because if there are people in a system that have access to critical systems and critical assets it is ultimately extremely important to make sure that uh, you have a system in place going forward especially for large orgs dealing with very very critical personal identifiable information specifically in finance healthcare manufacturing that you do know you are do, you are able to identify behavior on the fly that might not be normal uh and then take just in time to actually solve for something that could have been a problem and minimize you know what you can call the blast radius of 
if there is a problem uh, that that can happen um, so that's that's what i on uh, you know uh, the the behavioral analytics part obviously there's a there's a lot that can be done over there there's solution providers out there offering solutions around using machine learning and data science to kind of actually tap into user uh, logs and figuring out which of these behavior patterns are not normal so that obviously something that you can go for, go like go look go and look forward to but even before that if you have very simplistic rule based monitoring systems in place that can still do the job for you to start off with so that's that that would be my opinion on this great thank you so much uh, mr prashant uh, anything that you would like to share here before in, we jump into zero trust framework you seems to be on mute sir good afternoon everybody and uh, it's good pleasure uh, being here and um, being a part of a such a knowledgeable persons across all the industries and it is actually uh, i have to express just few things like uh, i am representing retail industry here so apart from all other industries like uh, fintech and all other industries retail is comparatively uh, uh, not uh, really uh, in line with the digital aspects but still uh, we are trying to make it in more and more uh, digital ready but this situation was a very um, a different kind of uh, situation which we are facing because uh, till now uh, we were running with the uh, as far as the industry's perspective uh, industry perspective is concerned uh, the industry was on more and more uh, client server kind of uh, technology and all of a sudden uh, move to a, a digital technology so the entire challenges like insider challenges and all other threats are totally different what we are facing is totally different than the uh, others uh because in fintech at least there are uh, 30 40 50 percent uh for that matter where uh, some things were on digital whereas in uh, in retail industry that was not the case the uh, cloud readiness or the acceptance towards the clouds were not that uh, uh pretty high so the situation was disastrous and uh, we have to uh, overcome the issues uh, with trial and error basis only because of uh, as rightly said by everybody is omil and um, uh, mr mukesh also the uh, the threats identifying the threats is a, a very uh, difficult situation because uh, although users are uh, using the data or power bi for that matter which is placed on cloud but the um, uh, circumstances where they are downloading that data and keeping on their laptop and then using it it's a very difficult situation and whereas in how to uh, track that data not to be shared with anybody else or uh, how to keep that data secure which is a actually a crucial data towards the business that is a biggest challenge sure. that's it so now i am interested more and more to listen about the solutions what are there available sure, definitely yeah we are getting there we are getting there but before we get there my question to mr pradeep um, uh, you know you you heard all the speakers talk about uh, uh, you know the the insider threat story and the you know, impact and how difficult it is to identify such threats and all that. Um, anything that you would like to share, Mr. Pradeep, because you you interact with the, you know leaders, industry leaders across geography and across like uh, you know industry sector. What has been your take and uh, you know uh, setting the context for our next uh, segment, which is uh, zero trust based framework, right? So over to you, Mr. Pradeep. Thanks, Daya. Uh, in fact, very, very exciting discussion. Uh, a lot of very, very interesting points from Dr. Satish, uh, Mr. Pradipta, Srivath. And uh, one thing that I, know I was really um, fascinating to see, panelists from very diverse fields or very different um, industries and uh, physical most of you share more or less the same kind of uh, situation right so one thing is pretty clear that irrespective of the industry irrespective of the kind of um, environment in which you, you know we operate the challenges are more or less same whether you are part of a, an oem whether you're part of a bank or part of a retail organization 
scenarios are more or less um, same respective of the what level of it or you know tech savvy the team is you know uh, like especially for the professor was mentioning that you are uh, what is it construction industry or you know infrastructure industry now very very interesting for another you know, people sitting in a working work site uh, no you cannot go and educate them about you no know, how to protect your data right they are least bothered so just drawing a couple of points and uh, this is more of a ibm philosophy or ibm policy that uh, the when it, when it comes to incident threats it is not a product specific point it's more about how do we detect and you know a user if you look at the statistics as i mentioned earlier it's not about the malicious users it's it's more about ignorant users and uh, if you list uh, some of the statistics that has been released last year 63% of the users are actually ignorant users not malicious users so genuine users happen to release data or happen to happen to click something happen to be part of one of the targeted attack and end of the day exposing the entire organization so the that you now that becomes one of the major reasons why it is so difficult to detect right because you have a genuine user right now there is no other way to identify um practically difficult to identify a user by his behavior by his physical behavior so the the accepted method methodology for detecting a malicious user or an insider threat is mostly looking at the behavior analytics like which has been <laughs> rightly mentioned by mr tyaki behavior analytic detection is something which is widely accepted and definitely with the help of ai and ml analytics because it's all about changing behavior so how is one particular user is different or his behavior is changing or different from the similar users as well as his behavior is different from his own past behavior right so unknowingly he has been part of a you know being of one of the breaches so there are a lot of known parameters and there are a lot of unknown parameters you no know, he himself is not aware that you no know, he has been moving or exfiltrating it a lot of data outside which is very very different from his past behavior mm -hmm. or he is accessing a set of data or type of data which his colleagues or his similar sized um, users are not used to access so behavior anomaly detection or user behavior and entity behavior anomaly uh, detection is a you know widely adopted technology right widely ad adopted concept there are definitely different tools or um, solutions around that which help you identify who is the right user who is the user to be um to be made aware of it's not about no catching hold of a particular user in fact i was yeah. i was uh, going to one of the interesting discussion where never discourage a user who accidentally click the link to report it because they will stop reporting that now i accidentally clicked the report i clicked the link so do not punish him for clicking a report so encourage reporting of an incident like that because sure somebody you know you know a lot of people get conscious about the repercussion of okay i clicked the link now what will happen to me the moment sure. they get the fear they will stop reporting that sure so sure. i i completely um, you know a lot of inputs completely agree with some of the points that has been raised by the team uh, over to you daya because we are also yeah. running a little short of time right absolutely absolutely so uh, mr manish thank you so much for patiently listening to uh, you know all the conversation thus far uh, you know you heard about insider threat and everything and uh, you know how difficult it is to catch them uh, right Uh, but my question to you is that uh, is zero trust framework answer to these challenges that we have discussed so far uh, in your mind and uh, yeah you know, over to you so, over to you yeah good afternoon everyone uh, so as per my personal view uh, zero trust is not the 100% uh, uh, answer to the questions which we have discussed but yes 
up to 99.99 percent it is uh, a good answer it is sustainable and as of now this is the only tool which we can use to you know defend with uh, insider trade or outsider trade or you know cyber security point of view sure and it sure. is one of the valid uh, framework it is one of the accept across the globe uh, solutions sure 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 uh, so thank you so much mr manish dr mukesh uh, your views on zero trust framework uh, very quick uh, input from all of you i am requesting because uh, we would like to kind of you know um, uh, not go beyond 10 minutes in this discussion and there is this important question that i want to know from each one of you and then i have to get some input from subject matter expert as well uh, but uh, over to you uh, dr mukesh You're on mute, Dr. Mukesh. I, I think rightly mentioned by Manish and other uh, other panelists that there is no solution which is 100% or foolproof or full proof. But zero trust comes close to that actually. What we need to do is we need to implement a, it's a completer. We cannot have it in bits and pieces. When you when you when you put it when you put it on the trust, you put it on the user, you put it on devices, you put it on sessions, you put it on data applications. So all the pillars of the zero trust, all the pillars of trust, you put it there, then it becomes close to the foolproof or foolproof. So that is where my very small, uh, what you say, one minute uh, uh, views as that. Don't go bits into bits and pieces because then it, you are open, you are keeping some uh, window or something open where something will have go wrong. So you have, when it is a zero trust, put everything which are there, you can trust user, devices, sessions, transport, data, applications, anything. So put it there yeah. and have a proper sure. plan to yeah. implement. You should not do a, a half risk assessment, do a complete risk assessment on the system, data, people, devices. Then, then, you, can, then you will put it there. If you sure. don't have the boundaries, then, then there is a problem. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Shrivats, your yeah, quick take. On a lighter note, zero trust is contradictory to our philosophy and culture. <laughs> In Bharat, we have a philosophy of trusting everyone. Okay. Right. On this, this note, uh, the zero trust uh, really works out well, like Mukesh and others said. And the most important part of the culture out here is, in organizations, we have built a culture where zero trust applies only for a particular hierarchy. Uh, and if you actually look at the hierarchy where the zero test is not employed and policies or exceptions have been given is a most vulnerable position. For example, mm -hmm. a CEO's user ID and password is shared with his assistant. All executive assistants handle the CEO's user ID and password. So in larger uh, spirit and philosophy, zero test implementation will become successful when it is top driven, not bottom up. Hmm. Sure, sure. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Mr. Yesharaj, your quick take. Sure, sure. So I would actually kind of uh, uh, also second what uh, Srivas just said that uh, uh, you know the idea around zero trust is that you know it should it should actually like come as a uh, uh, as a governance policy from the top in any organization because uh, whenever we are talking about implementing zero trust policies, generally it is not implemented in the true spirit it should be. It's generally half baked and then. It doesn't really solve the problems that we want to solve with it. So I do think that if implemented in the true spirit uh, by laying down proper governance policies and making the uh, uh, making it into your IT IT policy as well, we can really achieve the purpose that zero trust aims to achieve. Sure. Any any quick take from you, Dr. Satish and 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 Mr. Pradeepta? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll definitely come to you, Mr. Abhijit. Uh, Dr. Satish. See, my take also same similar what. Uh... Mukesh and Srivastava said. Uh, only addition is that definitely we need to prioritize the, we need to identify the critical assets. And that is yeah. how we can add this. That is only I, my, from my side. Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Mr. Pradeepta. I'll not take much of time on this. Uh, of course, uh, see, zero trust is one of like, you know, the terminology what you use. But of course, we need to look into like, you know, end to end. Um, um, uh, chain of those, uh, how we can protect our critical assets. 
and and to be honest uh, we have to make it uh, like you know uh, look into our basic things right because uh, today the basic things are also missing some of certain points what you see the administrator uh, password never been changed we have seen that as well so certain mm -hmm. things think corrected then like you know we can think about those uh, terminologies and like you know the frameworks which we talk about either it is nist or it is a SASE or we can talk about soar and all those those things are just a framework but honestly uh, as an enterprise we need to look into our basic first then we can take it ahead leverage those technology and again the processes and people and you have to build a good culture to ensure that like you know we are protected it is uh, cyber security is uh, responsibility but i can say everybody heard that but uh, practically it is uh, not happening in the ground that we need to as a cyber security leaders we have to in, you know, like you know create a culture which to be uh, to be there like you know everyone's responsibilities very thank important, you so much very important. thank you so much yeah. mr abhijit uh, you had to say something yeah i'll, I'll well, come to you mr prashant uh, you know i i anyway i wasn't raising hands anyways uh, since you asked okay. i think uh, everybody has i think uh, i hope i'm audible i think everybody has pretty much uh, articulated it i just wanted to say that uh, um, we do actually uh, started with a society which is trust based which is assumed trust mm -hmm. um, from that assumes trust i think issues were happening and now we are suddenly uh, you know going into um, a zero trust model where you trust no platform no network no device no user i mean uh, so i mean yes i mean uh, see uh, uh, we all like to discuss on uh, new tools, technologies, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, a security model where uh, um, uh, is based on who need to access what using which device from where and uh, where, when and how. Uh, all those will be prevalent and there are technologies uh, uh, which uh, sort of assumes breach in the first place and takes the preventive measures. Uh, they are there and a whole host of technologies are coming up, whether it's MFA, conditional access, limited access, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, mm -hmm. I just want to leave a thought uh, with you guys. Uh, and this is my personal take. Um, there was a book written by a Mossad agent a long time ago. And uh, I'll point, uh, yeah, I'll, t I'll give you two points basically. One was he said that uh, if one needs to commit an assassination to any state head and it's being planned individually by a single orchestrator, there is no defense in the world that can actually stop that assassination. And the second take is, uh, as you are building on technology, as I said, beginning of my conversations, that uh, issues are not our father's hackers anymore. I mean, uh, uh, they are very, very state sponsored. And uh, uh, whether it's a golden SML attack or et cetera, et cetera, they are very, very, very articulated. And uh, we also have technologies as user. If there is a malicious user which simply has a mobile phone uh, which has access into your system, no matter what you do in your computer system, uh, anything can be taken, literally. So uh, just like the assassination, if it's orchestrated by a single person. So these are all, I think, I guess, gives us a peace of mind at the end of the day. Sure. Um, uh, and we uh, uh, tell that to our board, our people. Yes, it does protect, certainly it does protect, bring certain governance and guidelines. But to what extent? Uh, that's something time will tell. Thanks. Sure. Thank you so much. Mr. Prashant, you wanted to say something. Yes, I would like to say, uh, uh, like on a lighter note, that uh, orthodoxly, wherever we were trusting nowadays, we should change our trust. Means um, uh, towards zero trust policy, I think now we should stop trusting on the orthodox ways and orthodox manners. And we should start trusting somebody other like technologies and some solutions on it so that at least we should have some zero trust policy in our organization. This is a lighter note. Sure. Mr. Pradeep, you heard about, uh, you know, the zero trust framework, the views and the opinions and the experience of our esteemed speakers, right? Um, there is some wish list as well. Uh, Shrivat shared about that saying that, you know, these tools and technologies framework First of all, they are like combination of people process technology number one number two within technology set They are they are completely different mindset whether it is application in you know mindset or an infrastructure mindset. So, you know uh, a Lot of owners lies on principle like yourselves, uh, you know the organization that you serve uh, uh, To kind of make it happen 
uh, that when we talk about zero trust framework, we are not talking about uh, the part that uh, you know Mr. Abhijit spoke about that if someone uh, you know wishes it and then as an in the in the individual capacity is able to do so, right? So I mean, how do you protect that? And uh, with that, if you would uh, you know kind of sum up your uh, you know experience of today's discussion, that would be great. Sure, thanks, there. So I'm taking cues from a uh, couple of points, just the practical difficulties or practical challenges that has been shared by Srivath, Mr. Taggy, and Mr. Padipta. Talking about why why it's very interesting to talk about concepts, framework, and you know, like Srivath rightly mentioned, you know, unless you you take a top-down approach or where the CAO or the CEO of the organization decide that this has to go down into the organization, nothing is going to happen. Like he has mentioned, uh, your username and password has been shared across his team and everybody can access and there is no point of having a framework, right? So, uh, while that's a practical uh, scenario, what Mr. Shivas was mentioning and, you know, Mr. Thank you also highlighted on the same point of, you know, uh, addressing it in organization-wise. Again, uh, Mr. Sudhir Pradipta mentioned that no, we should address the fundamental things first. You know, the password to not, not be changed for months together. So your framework, everything you know, will go through the window unless you get the basic uh, security hygiene in place. Now, keeping that, um, we at IBM Security believe that zero trust approach by adopting a user-focused view can help your security teams quickly detect uh, you know, user behavior anomalies and manage user risk from a centralized location. So that's a, that's a fundamental philosophy. Uh, zero trust approach continuously verifies the users and also reduces the data exposure if there is a breach. So we are looking for a framework which is relatively better, relatively widely accepted across multiple scenarios as, as you know a lot of people rightly mentioned there is no silver bullet right there is no quick shot solution for addressing the whole thing so we are looking at solutions like zero trust is not a oem specific right it's more of an approach more of a framework and there are multiple ways to you know achieve that Zero Trust definitely at the current scenario is um, a framework which can you know, cut across multiple kinds of scenarios, right? And relatively compared to many other frameworks, zero solutions could be the right solution for most of the you know, kind of organizations. So that's my um, take on Zero Trust framework. Great. I think we had this very interesting session today. Lots of learning. Thanks to each one of you for your participation. Um, you know, on an ending note, I would say that we as a society, we should still live in that same with the same philosophy, same values that we have been uh, grown up, which is 100% trust. Let's all trust each other. But at the same time, while we actually wear the cap of the 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 function that we represent in our organization, respective organization. Our organization is also expecting us to kind of be the leaders to making sure that when we take a flight, we know that it's going to work 100% of the time. So it's like zero trust. And that's the reason that you get the 100% satisfaction and peace of mind that, yes, I am going to be flying from point A to B and nothing is going to happen, right? So with that, I think it has been a, once again, great learning experience for me, especially. Thank you all for your participation today. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed the session. I hope you also enjoyed the session and there are learning for each one of us who participated in this session today. Thank you so much. Take care, stay safe. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much, you. team. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Daya and uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.